Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Boros Tokens. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are enjoying the brand new set. It's been an absolute blast. I know not just myself, John, and I think quite a lot of other content creators are enjoying a nice refresh to the format. I feel like we've been in a place of stagnancy. Stagnant? It's been stagnant for a while, so now uh, we're finally getting that refresh, not only with new cards coming in, but old cards rotating out. Uh, and it's it's giving us a lot more options to play with. And with that, we're seeing a lot of things like token decks uh, being able to push in different directions. A couple of days ago, we did release a video that was an Azorius tokens deck, which didn't really pan out very well. Uh, in general, it didn't really win anything. Uh, in practice, it did, but it was not a strong contender, uh, at least with the build that we had at the time. Uh, so, I thought, you know what, let's look at some other lists and see what other kinds of things we can find, and I found a Boros Tokens list. Uh, this is a completely stock list from TCG Player, but I think it's an interesting one, uh, and we'll talk about why as we go through. I do think this is a more powerful version of tokens, uh, truthfully. So. Uh, to kind of talk through the deck, some usual contenders in the one-drop slot. Hopeful Initiate, of course, is a phenomenal one-drop. Along, of course, with the Etching, we saw how powerful this card is in mono-red aggro yesterday. Uh, and so it's a really cool one to be able to see here. Uh, in the two-drop slot, again, some usual contenders with Intrepid Adversary. And, of course, Thalia is in here as a full four. Uh, we do get to, unfortunately, tax our own Etching in some cases. But other than that, this is 100% just a, a tax on the opponent. Uh, we do have Resolute Reinforcements, a card that we saw in the Azorius version of the deck, uh, and I think is a really good card. You can flash this out, get some surprise blocks in there, especially with the Adversary. These can be more like 2-2s two or even 3-3s three given the right board state, uh, and so it's actually quite good for us. Uh, one of the new cards that we get to add to the uh, the pile here is B Bayard? Bar Bard? <laughs> this guy. A little recruiter guy. Uh, so at the beginning of your end step, you control a creature with power uh, greater than its base power. You actually create a 1-1 one, one as well. What's nice is with the training here, with the, uh, the um, counters here, with the etching, we've got a lot of ways we can actually do that pretty quickly pretty easily uh, and so this is actually a really easy card for us to trigger if we can get it down uh, in the three drop slot again usual contenders brutal cathar of course reckless storm seeker for the aggro side of things and then adelin uh, which is just an obvious include i think adelin's one of the best three drops up there with um i think maybe graveyard trespasser is probably the best but adelin's definitely up there as well and then finally sitting at the top we've got the fury rider so uh as it attacks all other attacking creatures you control get plus one plus one until the end of the turn other red attacking creatures you control gain trample and other white attack uh untap each other white attacking creature you control so basically you're getting a lot of value out of a single card especially if it's attacking in with that storm seeker you can give it haste of course to get in for more attacks uh earlier and get in for more damage earlier so very aggro centric it's not as go wide as you would maybe expect out of a token deck, but i do think it's got a lot of powerhouse plays behind it uh, and again, hopefully we get to see that as we go through. So I'm not going to waste any more time, guys. We're going to jump right in. We're going to have some fun with this one. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys. And here we are for game number one. And wow, what an interesting hand. Uh, very white focus, but I'm kind of tempted to keep it. Uh, generally, this is a terrible idea. We're going to try it. Uh, just because we've got a nice one into two, regardless of what happens, I feel somewhat okay about keeping this. Any land gets us up to Adeline or Brutal Cathar, both of which are great options. Unfortunately, it's another white land. Not exactly what we want, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and attack in for one here. Uh, and we'll see what the opponent's up to. Scoured Barons leading the pack, uh, and then a black source as well. So kind of curious, this could be like a Infernal Grasp or a Cutdown that we're up against here. Uh, certainly don't love either of those options, but you never know. Okay, Sunset Revelry. Interesting. Uh, did not necessarily see that coming. Uh, let's go for the Adelin here. Um, and I will actually just go ahead and attack in. Uh, mostly because while they can kill the, or the, uh, the adversary here, I don't particularly care. 
we gain the life out of the deal, we get the creatures out of the deal, and so for me, that's more important. Uh, we do actually have the Fury Rider available here soon if we can get some red mana, so that would be really good. Any land gets us another adversary though, which is also good. Destroy evil, wow. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, red land is good, I will take it. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward, we're just gonna go for this. We're gonna auto pay. Uh, this does get this out of cutdown territory as well, which is just worth noting. Uh, and here they're just kind of in a position where they're either going to block or they've got a 1-1 one -one left and neither one's really all that impressive. Uh, I want to save the Brutal Cathar as good as it is to get rid getting rid of tokens. A 1-1 one -one really isn't high on my list of things that I feel I need to remove, uh, at least at this point while we're sitting at 23 life. So I think we'll be okay there. <laughs> Uh, interesting to see that they're playing Sunset Revelry, though. Certainly don't love that. Um, interesting. Okay. Sure. Alright. Uh, so we do get to throw this out for red. Unfortunately, can't really do too much with it at the moment. Um, again, I don't think we, we do that yet. Um, I don't love it, but I don't think we do this yet. I'm assuming they might have like a combat trick style thing. Like this seems like a very odd deck to uh, to be up against here. Okay, nice. So they do save themselves a little bit here. That's fine. I'm really glad we didn't go for the Brutal Cathar play then. Uh, that would have just basically been a nothing play. And they're gonna meat hook for two. All right, again, great we didn't play this. Um, Ooh, nice. Uh, so, I mean, I think we just go for the big value play. Uh, I, I mean, I think this is a reasonable start here uh, for them to try and get past. I'm assuming they'll be able to at some point, but this does seem like a really good powerhouse play. Ooh, Evolve Sleeper, a very, very good card uh, worth noting here. Thankfully, we have the Brutal Cathar, but this is very strong. Uh, and especially with them going ahead and investing quite a bit into it, uh, it makes it a little bit easier to uh, <laughs> kind of not get them by any means, but definitely, definitely hurt them a little bit. So let's go for the Brutal Cathara. Let's see what they do. 100% um, just going to try and take this. Uh, and then I will do this. We'll auto pay. It's fine. I'll attack for three. Not really anticipating much out of them. Okay, cool. All right, let's see what happens. Um, would love to... Soren's a little scary, but not the end of the world. Uh, the lifelink is actually more the problem. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let's see. All other attacking creatures you control. So, if we attacked in... Let's see, this would just get Trample, this would get both Vigilance and Trample? Huh. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Um, this probably isn't the best play, but I'm gonna try it. Um, I mean, they can double block onto something here, which I think is probably gonna be their best bet, if I had to assume. Uh, if you gain life this turn. So Markov Purifier. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think we killed that. Um. Yeah, not great, but we do get a little 1-1 one -one now, and then this flips, uh, which is nice. Oh, ho, ho, wow. Okay, well... Now we might just lose. <laughs> uh, Shieldred is very scary uh, because we're not going to be easily able to fight through it. And they've got the Urbort. Wow. All right. Uh, that is nice. I think we just take this. Uh, so we do get to kind of get them there a little bit, but we're still not in great shape. And unfortunately, we're just going to have to pass. Uh, we do get to flip the the brute again which is kind of nice so i'm hoping we can just kind of keep hitting them with this and and keep flipping and ideally uh be able to hit this urborg as well if they don't play anything it does flip um mm -hmm. 
We're gonna hit for three. That's gonna gain him some life back. Or excuse me, for two. Uh, which is obviously not what we want, but there's not a ton we're gonna be able to do about it, so. Uh, if they can deal with the Brutal Cathar, I think we are just done. I don't think we've got a good answer for that. Um, because they will in turn get both Shieldred and Evolve. Oh no! Yeah. Alright. <laughs> I think that's probably gonna be it. Uh, they get both of these guys back. They can start pumping up that Evolve Sleeper as well. Uh, yeah. We'll see what we draw. We'll see what we draw. Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna good game him here. That was unfortunate, but we did put up a reasonable fight, so I'm okay with that. Let's see if we can keep this going, guys. Let's see if we can get an, an actual win. <laughs> This month's Patreon rewards features some of the most impactful lotuses in Magic's history. Check out all the details and sign up at patreon.com slash itresolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, I do think we keep this. Again, don't love it, but I think we definitely keep it. Uh, we've got a hopeful initiate into potentially either the adversary, Thalia, uh, the recruiter. We've got some good options, so... Uh, and, of course, the, the Stormseeker sitting at three, which is helpful. Uh, we'll see what the opponent's up to. I, I'm a little skeptical. We do need to get some lands uh, at some point here, but this is a nice way to start. So We'll try it. We'll try it. Uh, yep. Ah, okay. Oh, lovely. Um, all right, so I think with that in mind, we go Thalia to slow them down as much as we can, and we can get a free attack in here, basically. Uh, Thalia helps because it does slow down the enchantments on their end. Uh, we do also have that Brutal Cathar, so if we get a third land, and they've only got one or two things down, we might be able to kind of swing a, a good play. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, we also can go pretty wide with the Recruiter if they can't deal with the Hopeful Initiate. Uh, so that's actually really nice as well. All right, let's see what happens. Um, hopefully we taxed them enough here that they're not gonna just have an easy turn to. Thalia was pretty clutch, very, very clutch. Um, and it looks like they're reading Thalia right now and probably not super happy about it. Um, okay, Naturalist is good. Basically this just evens out with Thalia, if that makes sense. Um, I really hope they accidentally attack in. <laughs> That'd be really nice. Um, wow, seriously. Oh no, they must not have known. Uh, I feel a little bad about that, but that's fine by me. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, all right, so we do get to attack in here. This is gonna put a counter here. This is also gonna give us a one one. Yeah, okay, I kind of assumed I feel a little bad. I think definitely the opponent was still maybe learning the cards a little bit, or maybe this is early in their magic career. Totally fine. It happens. Please don't feel bad about it. Uh, that happens all the time if I make mistakes all the time. So no worries. Let's go ahead and jump into game number three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And wow, what a hand. Um, I'm mulliganing that. What are these hands? Are you... How how is this possible? I'm I'm not I mean there was no way in the world I was gonna keep that. Um I think it's this and ugh. I love all of these cards, but I think it's maybe just this. That was weird. That was super weird. Four Thalias. Four Thalias. I mean that's insane. And then that first hand was garbage too. We had three of the same card, two of the yeah, uh, ugh. No, no. Uh, and they're all legendaries, so <laughs> I made it really terrible. Um, I will be happy to get Thalia into Adeline down. Excuse me. Um, I think that's a perfectly reasonable play. Uh, looks like mono red, potentially. Um, which is a little scary, but we're just going to tax their uh, burn a little bit here and potentially stave off an attack from the adversary. We'll see. Um, I'm assuming if they have burned, they'll use it, um, even if they do have to pay the extra one here. Yep. Seems fine. Uh, we're really more in the interest of slowing them down than anything else, so honestly, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, 
And I think we just keep this going by uh, forcing the issue. So basically we just want to stave off as much of the damage as we can. We do have the Seed of the Empire, which is worth keeping around. Um, I don't think we need to pull the trigger on it quite yet, but it is very worthwhile to ensure that we can uh, maybe remove a threat. Um, so while we sacrifice a land to do it and three mana, we potentially stave off quite a lot of attacks by the opponent in doing so, uh, which is helpful. Sure. 100% uh, gonna block. If they've got another play with fire, feel free. <laughs> like, I don't particularly care. Um, we're just gonna make it trickier for them. Yep. It's fine. Uh, again, not great, but not the end of the world. Um, all right. Uh, what is the best bet here? I wish we had two red. <laughs> that would be really helpful. Um... I think we just go for Adeline again. I, I hate to do the same thing twice, uh, but I think it's probably worth it. And again, holding on to that Seed of the Empire, worth noting we don't really need a ton of mana to make this deck work. It's more about having the right colors at the right time, and right now we kind of don't, uh, which is just unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. All right, I will block again. If they've got another play with fire or just a burn spell in general, they can use it. Um, but we're going to learn. Uh, so if they do have it, they will play it because they're going to want to get Adeline off the field. Yep. Uh, all right. Intrepid adversary. Hmm. All right. So let's hit this. Let's also throw this. Um, and this is actually quite nice just because we can gain a little bit of life back here. Uh, and also trade with an adversary if they just don't have a burn spell. We've done a pretty reasonable job of dealing with a lot of the burn that I would anticipate they have in their hand. Um, all right, not all of it, apparently. <laughs> all right, uh, mono red aggro, man. It's a good, good deck, uh, in case you were unsure. All right, so we throw this out. That's nice because it comes into play with the 1-1 one, one counter on it, and so we're going to immediately get the 1-1 uh, the one, one as well. So that's nice. Um, but we are pretty close to dead here, so <laughs> very unfortunate. Um, I still think this deck is better than the Azorius tokens deck, 100%. Uh, that Azorius one was fun uh, and a really cool idea, and I think there's something to it, but that version of the deck was not where it needed to be. Uh, man, they just have all the burn. I mean, it's insane. Uh, we can't do that, can we? We have to do this. Yeah, I mean, it's not looking good, guys. I'm just going to be honest. That kind of helps. Not really, but sort of. I mean... <laughs> nope, cancel. Nope, don't attack. Do not attack. Uh, so now we can trade and then leave up Iganjo. But we're at two, so like they just need a burn spell and we're dead. Oh, okay, cool. Ooh, that was not good. All right, well, that's okay, guys. Let's go ahead, let's chat about this deck. All right, guys, so Boros Tokens, definitely a lot different than the Azorius Tokens deck. I think that deck is looking to tempo out a little bit more, whereas this one is very much focused on the aggressive side that we really didn't get to see it work its magic. Uh, we did get to, to really dominate in that game too very quickly, but I think that was more just the opponent was still learning the game or learning the cards, uh, and that you can't hold against anybody. They just they have to learn, um, and so that's fine. Um, I think there's something to this deck, but truthfully, as it was demonstrated in that last game, Mono Red Aggro is really good uh, at the moment. Uh, we saw that yesterday with the Mono Red Aggro we played. I think the opponent's deck here was quite good. I'm anticipating that that is going to be one of the better decks to beat, especially early in the season. So that's just my anticipations and my my own thoughts on that. Uh, but it was very strong. Uh, I don't think this holds a candle to it. I think it's a little too slow, a little more techy, a little more fun, and it does a lot more. But I don't think you really need to if you're trying to be aggro. Uh, and so for me, I would lean more towards just mono red. I think it's a little bit stronger. Uh, now. 
Still a fun deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a blast to try out. I really encourage you guys to take the, all of these lists, play with them a little bit. Uh, that's kind of what we're doing. I know John's doing a lot of that as well, and it's been a blast. It's a really fun way to kind of explore the format a little bit. Give yourself that starting point, but then take it a step further as you go. So definitely take the opportunity to do that. Make sure you leave a like, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you subscribe just so you can, if nothing else, enter to win a free Dominaria United booster box. It's going to be happening on September 16th. So do stay tuned for that. But guys, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. I'll see you again soon.